Hello there, how are you going? Well, I've just been reading a fantastically funny book. Here's the book, look who it is, Alan Carr, My Story. You've got to go out and buy it. I only just discovered Alan Carr a few months ago. I've been living here in Sydney, Australia for a couple of years, and a friend of mine showed me this comedian on YouTube, a very camp guy, and immediately I was hooked, extremely funny. Some great one-liners and anecdotes about life, which many of us can identify with, with that sort of comical undertone and great timing and great punchlines too. And then I went back to England for a holiday during July and August, and I saw this guy, Alan Carr on the telly. He was never off it. And you know, I've complained before about people having overexposure, but this guy needed that exposure. Absolutely brilliant, hilarious, funny. And I was in Victoria Station just before returning to Sydney, and I saw he had his autobiography out. Of course, I had to buy it. Do I have any regrets? Zero. It's one of the funniest books. No, I'll go further. The funniest book I have ever read. I was in stitches almost from start to finish. You know, the guy's a complete bitch in it, but really brilliant. And very interesting on so many levels. Um, he was brought up in Northampton, born in Weymouth in Dorset in England, brought up in Northampton. His father was the manager for Northampton football team, briefly spent time in Blackpool Football Club too, which was quite interesting. But anyway, most of his younger years were spent in Northampton. And you've got this uh, comedian who I won't say came out as gay, because as he says in the book, he was never in the closet to begin with. No closet would be big enough. And he's got this very tough, pushy football father who, of course, wanted his son to do well, in many ways be a sportsman. So he used to push his son around quite a lot. And you've got this very camp young guy, Alan Kai. He doesn't want to be, you know, jogging and running around, touching trees and doing laps and laps of the sports field or the local park. And that's what I quite like, the contrast of the very tough dad and the very sort of but I'd say tough son to an extent, but a very different type of son, you know, not quite his father, and his father wasn't quite his son. Anyway, you can tell one of the most touching things about the book is that Alan's very close to his parents in so many ways. He speaks a great deal about his parents. A lot of autobiographies that I've read, the parents get a bit of a mention, but they're mentioned throughout his life. They've had such a big influence on his life, maybe more than he cares to admit. And although he's very tough on his dad, to an extent understandably sure, so in the book. At the end, I won't spoil it, but it's quite emotional for me and quite touching because he kind of gets to understand his dad a little bit better. But there's other challenges in the book, the challenges that every stand-up comedian has to come across and all those obstacles, and that is the dream that every stand-up comedian wants, and that is to be discovered. And you read about all the trials and tribulations of Alan Carr's early career when he won a BBC stand-up uh, comedian competition and didn't quite get the success that he expected or the fame out of it. But also the many struggles of the Edinburgh Festival, which he did for a few years, realising that although he was achieving his dream of performing, he still needed the money because he could lose up to £3,000. And he also would talk about his, himself and his life the struggles to earn money, such as working at Tesco's at Brent Cross and having the notorious role of being involved with the first ever 24-hour overnight supermarket Tesco's in Brent Cross where he worked and being there on that first important night. And I believe he even met Dale Winton, another TV show host, in the car park of all places. I think his career kind of um, never quite had the same effect after that, but brilliant. The book is absolutely hilarious, and there's some brilliant anecdotes. There's one about him and Lionel Blair, the tap dance from Blackpool Pier. Somebody came in, the manager of the pier, saying that a guy was attempting suicide at the end of Blackpool Pier. So you had Alan Carr run out, going, oh, let's, oh, let's save this man. And you've got Lionel Blair, this tap dancer, sort of tap dancing along the, the wooden floor of the pier to save this man's life. And the guy doing a double take as he sees Alan Carr on one side and then Lionel Blair pirouetting down the pier to save his life. There's another great story about a Jack Russell sitting on Alan Carr's face as he wakes up. And being a gay guy, there's all the stories about how he'd go out and get drunk when he was younger, to go home with a guy and then end up with a guy which wasn't really the guy that he thought he'd taken home. As I say, everybody looks better after a few drinks, that's why I don't drink. And he got all those wonderful anecdotes and the struggles, and I think 
the people who will benefit from this book are obviously the fans of Alan Carr. I think anybody who's a stand-up comedian who wants to learn how to make it in the business and understand the struggles and tribulations that upcoming stand-up comedians have to go through, but also those people who perhaps are struggling or growing up with their sexuality, their homosexuality, particularly come from a very masculine background like he did, traditionally masculine, quite conservative footballing background with his dad and, you know, from a small town like Northampton and what it's like and perhaps to learn from him. So I think it would benefit those people, as I say, the people who come from that sort of very heterosexual far for background, family background, and they're kind of struggling with their sexuality. Also the fans of Alan Carr, and of course, up and coming stand-up comedians. I really thought it was the funniest book I've read. I'd give it 10 out of 10, absolutely brilliant. I knew very little about the man a few months ago. Now I feel I know rather more than I probably should. It's an absolutely great book. If you like honesty, it's got honesty in bundles. Very, very bitchy at times, almost to the point I feel a little bit uncomfortable, but that's what I kind of love, a good bitch. And there's, there's a great sequence where he talks about his experience of meeting the Queen at the Royal Variety performance in Cardiff. And when she said uh, she was really interested in him, he took it as a big compliment, only to realise later that she probably says the same to everybody else. Anyway, go out and get the book. Here's the book. It's Look Who It Is, Alan Carr, My Story. Brilliant book, 10 out of 10. Go out and get it now. And Alan Carr, I know you've done the Melbourne Comedy Festival and you've performed in Melbourne. Come out again. Come out to Sydney. Come out to Melbourne and perform. Australia needs a great comedian like you. But if you don't know Alan Carr, go and watch him on the telly. Get him on DVD and make sure you buy this all-important book. What's the name of it again? Look who it is. Alan Carr, my story. Go out and get it. Thank you. Bye-bye.